Hello, my name is Jim Bellisere and I want to welcome you to Within the Millionaire Mind. The lesson today is going to be on managing your time and controlling your life. Interesting, when I saw this uh, this time clock in, in, in someone's hands and it was just melting away, it representing it, how time slips through our hands if we're not careful. And then when I saw the quote that Bob Mohan had put together, I thought how apropos for this lesson. You know, the best day of your life is the one on which you decide your life is your own. No apologies or excuses, no one to lean on or rely on or blame. The gift is yours. It is an amazing journey, and you alone are responsible for the quality of it. This is the day your life really begins. And that's because you're going to take ownership of the time so it doesn't slip through your hands. And the key to managing your time is taking control of your life. And the way you're going to do that through this illustration is going to be through your calendar. So whether you have a paper calendar, a smartphone, and a, and a computer, whether it's a laptop or a computer that's just uh, your typical uh, big box a computer, the bottom line is you need to sync your cell phone to your computer so that no matter where you are, no matter what time of day it is, you have access to see what's going on in your life. What are you going to be doing next? What did you create as a priority for this day? Now. I actually like to use Google. I think it's an amazing uh, search engine. It also offers a lot of awesome benefits when it comes to your address book so that you can manage all the people in your life, business and personal. And if anything was to happen to your cell phone, whether you lost it, dropped it in water, you, you know, you still have it on your computer because it's, it's uh, in the cloud, as they, as they say. And when you get a new cell phone, you can just sync it right back up and you're off to, to in business again. So it's really important that you pay close attention to that and, and you make sure that whatever you put in your calendar or ever whatever you put into your address book that that information is accessible no matter where you are no matter what time of day no matter what happens to your computer or your cell phone we think we choose how we spend our time the challenge is most people look back in time and say where did the time go? Remember the movie Back to the Future? That was a great movie. I think there was like two or three sequels to the first one. And the thing is, is that when they would go back in time and they realized, you know, what they did and, and then realized that they needed to go back in time again to fix it. Could you imagine if we could fix time? If we could actually go back in time and, and have a do-over, how amazing would that be? And what would we do differently? if we had the ability to go back in time and make those changes. Obviously, we don't have that ability, so we've got to make sure that the time that we have counts. We've got to be aware of the things that rob us of our time. You see, time is our most precious commodity, and you can't buy it. You can either spend your time, or you can wisely invest your time. At the end of the day, or the end of our life, we're going to end up with achieving our dreams or having lots of broken dreams. So what you make of that time will determine where you end up. So how do you spend your time? It says everything about you and what your priorities are in your life. So the goal here is to write down your daily goals and obligations. And it's critical that you take the time to do that, both your per personal and your professional life. Living by your calendar is, is so critical for maximizing the time and staying focused on the tasks in front of you. So many times we allow the urgent to steal time from the important. Before you know it, you've lost a week and you never accomplished what was really important to you. Have you can you look back in time and see those, those opportunities that were missed because the, where did the week go? The better planner you are and the more efficient you are at scheduling, the greater chance you have of accomplishing what you plan to do. And you'll have greater satisfaction in your life because you know you accomplish the things that you actually set out to do. Are you someone or do you know someone that is always in a hurry and they seem to never have enough time in the day to get things done? These people deal with constant anxiety. Their decisions cause them to overreact to circumstances because they lack the time to think things through. This often leads to the feelings of inadequacy, disappointment, anger, and even depression. It's typical for people to plan too much in a day. Sometimes it's because they keep putting things off until tomorrow. It creates a small snowball effect on their to-do list. As a result, they feel tired, dissatisfied with their lack of accomplishments. 
Does that sound like anybody you know? I mean, think about that to-do to list. You keep adding to it and adding to it and adding to it, meaning that there's never an end in sight to the to-do list. And all you want to do is pull out your hair because you're so darn frustrated. You see, if we can control our life through our calendar, we won't be so frustrated. Because get, getting frustrated can cause you to give up on your goals and thinking there's no way you'll ever, ever catch up. When this happens, it can bring a panic attack and cause you to lose control of your emotions and lose focus on your goals. You need to pace yourself. Using the calendar for your daily goals allows you to pace yourself and set time limits on the things you need to accomplish. So if you didn't finish something during the window of time that you gave it in your calendar and you need to move on to the next phase of the day, well, it's okay. You put that part on hold and you move on to the next part of the day so that you can get something done. By answering the questions below, you can determine how much pressure you put upon yourself. For example, am I someone people can easily take advantage of? Yes or no. Am I someone that is always running out of time? Yes or no. Am I someone who seems never to have enough time to relax? Yes or no. When I take time for myself, do I spend most of my time feeling guilty about what I didn't get done? Boy, I can tell you a lot of people that are like that. At the end of the day, am I irritable and want to be left alone? Yes or no. Do I take work home or complain about what didn't get done? Yes or no. Am I always trying to do more than one thing at a time? <laughs> that actually sounds like me. Yes or no. Am I always frustrated because I feel as though I, I don't have enough time for myself and the people I love most? I want to share something right here before I move on to the next slide. You know, one thing I realize how precious my time is with my spouse. And when Donna decides to ask me a question or she wants to tell me a story or she wants to tell me what's going on or she wants to talk about the meal or that's coming up today you know at the end of the day i pause the tv if i'm in, if i'm watching it or i look away from my computer or i if i was texting or doing something with my phone i put it down and the reason i share this with you is because i know that i only have a little bit of time to hear what she has to say and I want her to know that I acknowledge her and I'm listening to her. And you, you know what's really amazing about this? Now, this could even sound selfish, but it's not meant to be selfish. I realized by doing that, I not only got a lot out of the, the, the communication that she was sharing with me, but I realized she doesn't have to repeat herself. We don't have to come back to that point and talk about it again because she, she was able to relay what it was she wanted to share with me. And I was able to think about what she said and respond to her. If you don't give yourself the time to pay attention to the people you love the most, you miss out on so much. So I just wanted to share that with you because if you don't do that, I want to challenge you to pause the TV or look away from the cell phone or look away from your computer. Okay, if you answered yes to three or more of the questions I asked you, you can easily fall into the category of someone who does not effectively manage your time. Using the aforementioned tools, you can avoid adding unnecessary stress and anxiety in your life. So now I want you to write down some of the things you feel can cause you to be overwhelmed or dissatisfied at the end of the day. I'd like you to also write down what you can do to make your day less stressful. And then I want you to think about what steps can you take to gain control of your daily and weekly schedule. The simple rules that you, you need to follow to make positive changes in your life, for example, you should always have a to-do list for the next day. Break that list up into priorities, the most important to the least important. Start delegating projects. Stop thinking you're the only person that can do the tasks. And you must allow others to take ownership and do their part. Uh, I want to share something with you. Uh, if you use apps a lot on your cell phone, there's an amazing app. It's a to-do list app. It allows you to type in like your grocery list, your to-do list, people you need to call, things like that. I actually started using it because my wife Donna actually was the one that told me about it and she downloaded it. And the really cool thing about it was 
is that it actually syncs with her to-do list and my to-do list so if well, one of us is out and about we can actually help each other out whether we're grocery shopping or going to the store to pick up something and so on and so forth which can by the way save time you don't have to be the only one that does everything so learn to take time for yourself take a break during your day don't answer the phone or think about business I know that's tough take some time to do what you want to do Unwind for about 15 minutes or so. Imagine <laughs> unplugging yourself from everything out there. You're going to be amazed at how refreshed you feel and ready to go for another round. The list below is going to represent possible priorities in your life. Put them in order of how you spend your time as it relates to your life today. So your first priority, second, third, and so on. If there's something not mentioned, just go ahead and fill in the blanks because I'm going to create a couple of uh, extra blanks for you to, to do what you want with. So I'm, I'm just going to lay them all the, the items out and you're going to put a number next to the, the word in what priority um, you actually follow with, with each one of these as you live your life today. So your family, money, career, security, faith, health, Appearance, other, other, those are the ones that you can actually fill in. Romance, possessions, entertainment, relaxation, friends, and organizations. So put a number next to each word, and then if you have something I didn't mention, just get rid of the word other and replace it, and then put a number next to it in terms of priority as you live your life today. Oh, I forgot. Intellectual stimulation. Now, Using the list that you, we just developed, I want you now to write out your priorities as you would desire them to be. Start with the first priority as the most important to the least important to you. Your next step is going to be to write down what you can do to make the needed adjustments to get your priorities in the right order. Okay, by taking control of your life, you'll be less anxious, you'll feel better about yourself, this will allow you to put most of your priorities in the order that satisfies you. Remember this, it is not generally the big things that affect your attitude in the direction of your life. It is usually the small things that turn into insurmountable obstacles affecting our attitude and our feelings of accomplishment or lack of accomplishment. So here's some recommended reading. Uh, Stephen Covey is amazing. You know, he, I don't know if, uh, if you ever read this book. It's been around for years and years. Seven, the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I, I can't encourage you enough to read that book. And then The Eighth Habit. So reading both those books will actually bring you totally up to speed in creating the best possible habits in your life. And I want to thank you for taking the time to participate in this lesson.